Well, it's time to piss some people off. Hello everybody, it's me, Pokepid, your new favourite idiot. Welcome back to another video on my channel, and today it's time for a tier list of Pokemon games. Now I've never really done a tier list before because my opinions on some of these games are really gonna upset some people. There's gonna be some controversy, but you know what, it's about time. I can't shy away from this for any longer. We've just gotta get into it. And without further skidoo, on that note, let's just get straight into it. So I've got these games into chronological order of release date and we're just gonna go through them, get some opinions on it and we'll see how we do. But first up, Pokemon Red and Blue We'll, go, we'll start with Red and Blue, the OG, the OG games. Now, I'm 611 years old, so I've played the first Pokemon games. <laughs> um, no, I'm not, I'm 32, but I've still played the first Pokemon games. I was still around for the hype. I was about, I don't know, eight or nine years old. And I can admit, in isolation, if you take those games now, they're not as good as they were. However, I really, really do like them, so I don't know whether to put them in A or B. It's a tough one. I'm going to go with B, because obviously they've slowed down over the years. And you know what? It's the same with Yellow. I think Yellow is a unique game for its generation, completely. Uh, first example of Pokemon following you. It's It changed up all the sprites into a more colourful system, and it's... Do you know what? It was really good. I'm going to go B for all of those. Uh, I know some people would put them lower, but this is my tier list, so who cares? <laughs> and on that note, I also played gold silver and crystal and i remember um a kid of mine at school coming back from a holiday in america and he had the games already he had gold or silver i can't remember which one and the anime had barely even released in this uh, in the uk at this point so he was showing us all these new pokemon and everything and we were just getting caught up with the rare candy chief from gen one you know so it was quite an entertaining experience however Je um gold silver and crystal I absolutely love and I am never gonna say anything otherwise I think they're fantastic games I do play them at least once a year I should probably do them on a series to be honest but I absolutely love them I really do I don't care that you know you can beat the Pokemon League with like level 35 Pokemon I don't care I know the level scaling and the gym scaling is quite weird and all over the place I don't care I just really enjoy those games. They're fantastic, and I go back to them quite a lot. The music gets me all nostalgic. Love them. And on that note, Ruby, Sapphire, um, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Again, back to childhood. I remember being on holiday. I basically spent all my holiday money on Pokemon Sapphire and then never left the caravan we were in at the time. <laughs> so they were pretty good. This is going to be a weird one. I'm going to put Ruby there and then Saf uh, Sapphire there because that's the game I played a lot a lot and I absolutely loved it and I'd be a fool if I put Emerald anywhere other than A. We haven't got an S tier yet and we'll get to them but not right now. Um, Fire Red Leaf Green, this is where controversies come in for people. I'm really not that fussed by them. Genuinely, eh. I much prefer Red and Blue and other Kanto iterations. Fire Red Leaf Green to me are just eh. I just don't really... I can't connect with them. I did play them on the Game Boy Advance and they sort of took all the magic away of playing them on the Game Boy. I don't know if that's Nostalgia Eyes being seen. I don't know. But either way, I just, I've just i never really got into them. I've got them. I've still got the Game Boy Advance cartridges. Hopefully they're coming on Nintendo Switch Online and we can play them. Um, but yeah, we'll just, we'll just move on from them actually to save controversy. Although I've said that, this is where things are going to take a turn for some people... Oh dear, I know. <laughs> I haven't finished a Diamond or Pearl game all the way through because I can't. I've tried them many a time and I just can't get on with them. Genuinely, the animations are so slow, everything is very lethargic. Your surfing is very slow as well. I know that's not a massive issue, but still. I can't really get into the story that much. Um, the DS era of Pokemon was when I ducked out of Pokemon and then I came back in for the 3DS era. But even so, going back and playing them, I just can't engage with Diamond and Pearl. I genuinely can't. Um, there's 
nothing in Diamond and Pearl that Platinum doesn't improve on. And yes, I'm going B tier, not A tier, because again, I'm not that fussed about the Sinnoh region as a, as a whole. Hence why Platinum is going to be B tier, but that basically takes everything from Diamond and Pearl and makes it better. So to me, Diamond and Pearl, I just don't play any. I just don't have a need for them. I don't have a care for them. But Platinum, on the other hand, I can agree, that's a great game. That is a great game. I'd happily play that any time. But, yeah, there you go. That's where that's going for now. Um, and then we get onto Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Now, this is a tough one. This is a tough one for me, genuinely. Um, I'm going to go A tier. I'm going to go A tier. Just because... They still keep that charm of these original Gen 2 games on the Game Boy Color. Um, they do improve on it. But I don't know this. They're on par for me. I don't think they've come in and like massively improved to the point where it's a better game. But, you know, taken in moderation, I like both the Gen 2 versions of this and the Gen 4 versions of this in equal measure. So to be honest, that's pretty much where that's going to go. They're fantastic games, no doubt about that. No question about that. Absolutely nothing wrong with them. However, that is where they're going to go for this tier list. It's going to take a lot to get into that S tier. Right. This also isn't going to be great. <laughs> um, I can concede that Black and White and Black and White 2 are good games. But for me, that's Sword... But for me, I just, I'll play them. I'll play them every now and again. But when I get to the end of the game, I just sort of think, oh, fair enough. Do you know what? I'm going to put black and white up a notch just because of that um, Pokemon League. The whole situation with that, the whole story behind that, getting infiltrated you know, by team, um, whatever it's called. Galactic Plasma? I can't even remember now. For God's sake. You know, getting... getting completely overrun by N and gets this and I just think that story is fantastic getting the legendary having to battle somebody else with the legendary and then you can go back and battle Alden and then you unlock not you know being able to not catch just gen 5 Pokemon so it's you know what yeah I'll give them a B tier but for black white 2 I just I don't know there's some something about you know Unova that I just doesn't click with me it's okay but it just doesn't click with me and now this is where a lot of people comment down below to tell me I'm an absolute fool. I love X and Y. Shoot me. I don't care. You know, do you know what? I know that the the evil team isn't all that. And I know that your rivals are a bit boring. But does that is that it? Is that really what you what all the makes a game, to be honest? The story of it with the ultimate weapon is genuinely underrated. I think that's a fantastic storyline. I mean the motive behind the evil team for it is a little bit like, oh we wanna you know, get rid of the world. I'm like, okay, fine. That's a bit weird because then you'll die. But you know, the actual if you look at the story of the of the ultimate weapon, it's a fantastic sort of center point. And then AZ three thousand years ago with the Great War, and you got AZ's Floet, and I just love all of that. And I've got a feeling we're going to see a lot more of that built upon at some point in the missing Z game, and eventually in about ten years' time when they remake Gen Six. But I love them being able to grow berries berry mutations if you grow certain berries next to each other and going back to um, tend to those berries with mulch that you can grind over there and sometimes there's a bug attacking your tree and that's just one aspect of it you can get a job in the hotel riches seam riches me whatever it's called you can get an actual job and earn money there if you complete certain tasks within a certain amount of time you get two sets of starters and then when you finish the game you get given a starter by Shauna, like one of the starters you didn't choose from Kalos, which I think is incredible. You've got a 400 wide nap decks, uh, you've got 400 wide regional decks, and then you get a 721, I think it is. Um, or well, might it be 722, I can't remember now. Either way, you get that as a national decks, which is insane. The last time we saw an actual official national decks, I think, um, of that caliber. The, the the Dex is fantastic as well. I know you can use others, but you know, you've got Skidoo and Go Go, for example. Come on. You know, Litleo and Pyro, the Clauncher Cloritzaline, Scrope and Dragalgy, um, Horlucha. 
which is fantastic. Furfru, very underrated, very difficult to come up against in the early game. You know, it's Helioptile, Tyrantrum, the fossils of those games are fantastic. And I should stop going on about it, but um, I'm going to be do eventually doing a, a whole story, a whole video, sorry, of why I think X and Y are fantastic games and people should play them. And I will always testify to that. But moving on. <laughs> Amiga Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, absolutely A tier. Do you know what? Hmm. Do you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to go S tier. No, I'm going to go S tier. I really want to play those games again. I'm playing through one on a series now with Alan, aka the Doorman. Doorman, aka whatever you want to call it. <laughs> whatever way round you want to put it. But they're fantastic games. They took Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald and built upon them, added the Mega Revolutions, which is another reason to love Gen 6. Mega Revolutions, come on. You know, added that. The graphics of the 3DS made it so much more immersive. You can physically fly using the Eon flute on the Latias or Latios. I remember doing that for the first time and my mind was blown like I'm actually flying around a region myself. This is incredible. And it was. It was fantastic. Um, yeah. And then the whole primal reversions as well. Brilliant. Yeah. They go in, a, they go in S tier. Absolutely S tier. And then completely over under the spectrum, sun and moon down there. The short reason behind that is that ultra sun and ultra moon make sun and moon completely redundant. And I'm going to go ultra sun and ultra moon into the B tier. Yeah, they're good. They're good games. They are good games. Again, I'll, I'll probably play them once a year. Good games. Enjoy them. Not quite up here with these. Definitely not up here with these. But no, they're, they're good games. Sun and Moon, though, sort of redundant now. We've got an ultra version of that game. I know it's slightly different in terms of story and things. Oh, excuse me. But, th yeah, they're redundant. They're not. They're pretty good. Okay, so... My favourite iteration of Kanto is Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And let me tell you why. The graphics. Incredible. You, I know that you don't physically battle to catch Pokemon. I'm aware of that. I'm aware of that. I know you can't train by physically battling Pokemon to do Again, I'm aware of that. It was a game designed for, you know, trying to bring Pokemon Go plays, players over to the Switch and play some Pokemon games there, which... People see that as quite a bad thing, but I look at it as like, why Why is that a bad thing? Why is it bad for, you know, a company like Pokemon Company or Game Freak to design a game to be more inclusive to their fan base? A fan base that maybe hasn't played some, haven't played some of these mainline series games yet. And they're thinking, yeah, I like Pokemon Go, maybe I'll play one of these. Why is it such a bad thing that they want to get more people involved in the worlds that they built, you know? So that's that game. It bridges the gap for them. And, you know, if there's a game that's going to get more people involved in the Pokemon world, you know, into the Pokemon fan base, hopefully positive people, then I'm all for it. And, you know, it really is the freshest and most beautifully looking version of a Kanto game I've played. And I will happily play those games again, especially with you've got Master Trainers in the post game. You know, you can get your Mega Evolutions in the post-game. You can train at your Pokemon however you want, base stat-wise. It's it's quite unique and beautiful, and I love those games, and I always will. Right, speaking of these now, Sword and Shield. This is a tough one for me, because I don't know whether to put it in A or S. In A or S. Do you know what? I'm going to go I'm going to go A. I'm going to go A. I loved them. Thoroughly loved them. Um, they're not without fault, obviously. They're the last sort of linear core series game we've pretty much got, like, you know, in terms of the first of a gen. The last linear sort of version of that. But I really liked them. You know, the DLC areas you get there add a whole lot more for you to, to enjoy. You can build your competitive mons in there, uh, as proved by the EBL. Go and watch this Season 5. It's going to be up um, this coming weekend, I believe, um, as at time of posting this. So go and watch that. But yeah, they I thoroughly enjoyed them. Again, the decks is fantastic. It's a fantastic dex. Uh, hell of a lot of good mons in there. Still mons I haven't even used, but I'll need to go back and try them. And I've played many a run-through of Sword and Shield now, just for fun. Like, purely is just fun. You know, if I want a nice, relaxed, enjoyed game, Sword and Shield's one of the first ones I think of. If I want to kick back after a hard day at work and start a run-through, that's one of them I think of. 
So they are A tier for me. Not quite up here with my faves, but they're A tier. And then BDSP, I don't think are as bad as people are saying. I do think they took these and built upon them massively here. And I'd put them on par with Platinum. Platinum's got that nostalgic edge. Um, it's pretty it's pretty all right. Um, but BDSP, I don't care if they're in the chibi style. They're faithful remakes of these games, and I just think they're the ultimate version of them. I could do dig I could um, dig on the underground in there for treasures for hours, and I did when I first played these games. Um, so for me, they are proper B tier. Not quite A tier. They're pushing. Not going to lie, they're pushing. I like them, but they're going B tier for now. I'd happily play them. You know, you can catch all the legendaries in the post game with um, getting the I can't remember what they're called now, but the certain things when you're digging for your treasures. Um, and yeah, they're fantastic. Um, the chance to you to chance for you to catch more Pokemon than in the Diamond and Pearl decks is there for you. You get more Pokemon in the underground. I think that's a great addition. The Grand Underground, sorry. So yeah, they can go into B tier. PLA absolutely up here for me. People say. Legends Arceus doesn't have replayability. I've played it through three times and I've enjoyed it every single time. Filling out the decks, being the main focus of a game for the first time properly in these games, rather than just being an additional thing you could do along the way. It's essential in this and it's fantastic. It really is. The music really, really gets me in the mood for playing the game. It really set the, re the music really sets the world up perfectly in my opinion so that's why for me it's going to be s tier while i have an itchy shoulder um the new additions they made um, pokemon wise loved all of them Baskalesian, overquill loved them uh, not too fast about the hisui and lilligant but other than that yeah love them um yeah and every time i pick this up and play it pokemon legends arceus i'm relaxed i'm happy it, I like that they, you know, they mentioned the fact that you could die. <laughs> so it's not exactly adult things, but they don't hold back this time. So I do, I do enjoy them. So that's why PLA for me, yeah, we're going S tier. And now Scarlet and Violet. This is a tough one. I just don't know. Are we going to go S tier or A tier? We're going to go S tier to end off this video. We're going to go S tier. And do you know why? The shiny hunting method just edges it for me. Just about. They're fantastic games on their own. The world is fantastic. If they can iron out some of the details in upcoming patches or DLC, then that'll be perfect. You know, some of the, not glitches, but you know, like, you know, you can see the underside of the world sometimes when you're zoomed in and, you know, all things like that. So if they can really get to the bottom of those issues, get them sorted, get everything perfectly rounded, then I think they'll be absolutely perfect. But for me now, they're still S tier games anyway. Um, it gives me hope for the future of Pokemon. It gives me hope for the future uh, for Gen 10 whenever it gets here, because I think the next open world type game they do is going to be absolutely fantastic. It really is. But for now, Scarlet and Violet, again, another fantastic Dex. Some real concept in some of the new Pokemon. And yeah, for me personally, S tier for now. Absolutely love them. That's where they're gonna stay. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching this video, everyone. If I've upset you, let me know in the comments below. If you agree with me, let me know in the comments below. Either way, thank you for watching this video. Do subscribe if you got this far. You must have liked the video if you have. And yeah, I shall see you around. Bye bye. Thank you for watching this video. I do recommend the couple I've put on screen now. I've got the little subscribe circle. Click it if you want. Well, click something. <laughs>